Well, welcome everybody. I'm Bev with Absolutely Gospel, and I'm sitting here with Travis Tripp, the one and only amazing <laughs> singer and songwriter. Oh my gosh, it's such a privilege to have you here on Absolutely Gospel. Well, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Oh, you're so welcome. Hey, you've got some great stuff coming out. Your new album with the Christian Country or Gospel, and it's called Country Chapel. Yes, I'm excited Tell about this album. Tell us a little album. bit. This Tell album, me a little bit about it. This album is basically the culmination of something I've been wanting to do for over 30 years. Um, I wow. was raised in church. Um, my mother, bless her, she was one of those people that made sure above and beyond anything else I was going to be in church and learning the Bible was ever since I was just a kid. And um, mm -hmm. so when I started having success in the country music world uh, over 30 years ago, she has been, she hasn't hounded me, but she's constantly reminded me that, you know what, son, I would really like it if you made a gospel album. So I've been wanting to do this for a very long time. And you know, timing was never right, and uh, mm -hmm. I had a lot of resistance from record labels and, and that sort of thing. But this past year, I, I sat down and started talking with the folks over at Gaither Music, and they yes. seemed extremely excited about the opportunity to do this album, do this project with me. And then it was just a matter of just going back and finding the songs that really meant the most to me when I was growing up and uh in finding a way to do those just a little bit differently than they maybe have ever been done before and then also to write some material for this particular album and that is i i have listened to it and i am just i'm loving it just well, loving you. it and you are so welcome now tell me the ones that you've written i i i have an idea of which ones i i know that you wrote but Let's tell the people which ones you wrote on this project. Well, the first song that I actually wrote uh, for this album, although it was written way back when, was a song called Like the Father Loves His Son. And I actually wrote that song when I was in my teens. I don't remember the exact age, wow. but it was somewhere between 13 and 16, probably. And uh, just that awkward time. But I had... Uh, a very profound experience um, mm -hmm. praying one night and mm -hmm. uh, felt that, you know, more than I had ever felt before, I really felt God's presence in that room. And I felt as though he was, he was actually talking directly to me and basically saying, you know, all these, all these things that you're worried about and all these things that you're struggling with right now, don't don't worry. I've got you. Everything's fine. And as long as you just, you know, keep turning to me. And it was it was cool. such an incredible experience. It was so uh, really unexplainable that um, it made a huge impact. And I found myself just a few days or weeks later actually mm -hmm. writing the song uh, wow. and Later on, um, I, I would do that song. I would play that song in church uh, when I was a, a featured soloist. And and yeah. it just got a tremendous response every single time. So I always kept that one in my back pocket. I never, uh, re I never published that song. I never mm -hmm. uh, really did anything with it at all because I knew one day that I was going to have an opportunity to do a gospel album. And I wanted to include that on this album. So it's on there. The other uh, right. two were songs that um, I wrote with a tremendous songwriter, uh, a friend of mine named uh, Aaron Retier, who is, um, he's written so many great songs for so many people, yeah. but this was the first opportunity I'd had yeah. to write with him. And I was telling uh -huh. him, as soon as we sat down, he came in and he actually came to my house and we wrote together. And uh, of course, as soon as he got to my house, he met my, my whole family and he met my my oldest daughter, my oldest child, which is my daughter, and then my two sons. And 
when we sat down to start recording uh, or start writing together, he said, man, those two boys, there's no denying them. They look just like you. He said, it must be like, it must feel like looking in a mirror. And I said, yeah, it's very much so. And we started talking about uh, a song idea I'd had for um, another, once again, another personal experience growing up of having my mother and other people in my family that I knew were, were very devout, um, having them praying for me at times when I was in very, very dangerous positions uh, that I put myself mm -hmm. in. And every single time I knew that my mother especially was praying for me, praying for my safety. And yes. I started thinking about um, that's exactly the way that I feel about my children. Now that I'm older mm -hmm. and have children of my own, I worry about them, you know, a lot. And right. so every right. time that I do, uh, I do what I always do. I, I go and pray. And yes. I, I wanted them to, yeah. to have an idea of, of, first of all, the way that I grew up and also get an idea about how to move forward in their lives, knowing that they've got somebody at home that is praying for them the way my mama used to pray for me. So that's that's where that song title came from. My mama used to pray for me. I kind I kind of thought there's a cool story behind that. Absolutely. And um, there's nothing like a mama's prayer. Nothing and, like you that. Know, we, it just is so um, it's powerful and it moves heaven and it God does. listened to mama's pray. That's exactly right. So, and then the and it sure looks like. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I, I know we've got a delay here probably from our headphones, but I was just thinking that, you know, your your mom has got to be on cloud 999. You know, that's, that's one of the, so that's, that's one of the big blessings of this album, I think, okay. because not only is it an album that she has wanted me to make and that I've wanted to make for a long time, mm -hmm. over 30 years. But the fact that it's coming to fruition now and she's still, I mean, my mom's 85 years old, but she is still very wow. vibrant and, and young looking and young acting and very, she's still just as sharp as a tack. And so I'm extremely blessed that not only did I get to make this album, but that she's still around to hear it and enjoy it and to see this yeah. dream come true after all these these many years so it's it's a it's a blessing all the way around that is so cool and i being a mom i can identify you know just knowing that you know my my kid is finally doing what what i've asked him to do for all these years you know <laughs> <laughs> exactly exactly so but um but i i listened to that and i thought wow what a sweet song and tribute to your mom well thank that you is, very much um, so she has to be so so blessed. You're welcome. And then you asked um, you, you asked me about one. you asked me about the third song that I wrote for this yeah. album, and um, uh -huh. that was a song that actually ended up being the title cut. It was called Little Country Chapel, and I wrote that one with yes. Aaron Rittier as well. And that uh -huh. basically came as the idea came from um, I remember years ago when I first started to go to Nashville to work mm -hmm. on records or to write or to do whatever. Um, I drove right. by a church early one Saturday morning and I saw a guy standing out in front of this church, looking up the steps, looking at the front doors of this church. And he was, I could tell he, he had a little bit to drink. He was kind of, you know, <laughs> shuffling back and forth and wobbling and, and, but I was thinking it made such an impression because it, it's, it was one of those things that you just wonder what's going through his mind at that particular time. It, it's right. almost like I want to go in there, but I'm almost scared to because I, I, just, I just don't know what, what I'm going to find. And so this, right. normally when you write a song, you, you write the song and you record it and then an idea for a video comes up. This this was one of those that happened exactly the opposite. Aaron and I pictured the video in our minds 
before we ever wrote the song. And that made it extremely easy mm. to tell this, this person's story. It's a, it's a fictional story, obviously, but it's, it's something that could very mm -hmm. well have happened to that guy mm -hmm. or That's any cool. other person out there. So it's, yeah. uh, it's, it was, it was a lot of fun to, uh, to write with Aaron and also to get the opportunity to, to create new material, some new material for this album. Right. You know, it's just, that is, I can't wait to see the video. So are you, <laughs> <I can't. laughs> so are you going to, is the video coming pretty soon? That the, I don't, that jacket? I don't know. That I don't know about. We just recorded. Okay. Actually, we just recorded the, um, the entire album. We did a concert last week in uh, just outside of Nashville and mm -hmm. at the Loveless Barn. And oh, we, yeah. I brought in all of, I'm sorry, I brought in all of the That's original okay. um, musicians and background singers mm -hmm. that sang on the album. And we did the entire album top to bottom in front of a live audience. And we videotaped it and recorded it. Uh, and it's going to be put out just a little bit later on this year. So I'm extremely excited about that. That'll give us an opportunity. And there's also the possibility of including some of these songs, uh, maybe one or two, in uh, some of the upcoming shows that we've got going on. Awesome. Oh, people, get ready. So <laughs> when you hear this album, you're just going to love it. There's so many great songs on it. And, uh, and of course, you've got the great voice of Travis Tritt here to sing you these beautiful songs like In the Valley, He Restores yes. My Soul. Yes. And um, like, you know, I, I really love that song, Like the Father's Love. His Thank song, you so oh my much. gosh, that is beautiful. Thank and, you so much. You know, isn't it, uh, don't you find it awesome? You're so welcome. Don't you find it awesome after so many years? You wrote that when you were a kid. Yes. Yet the time is now. Yes, that it's being released. It just isn't God know, amazing. It's 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 God is amazing. It's just uh, it's once again. I've always believed that everything happens right when it's supposed to, and mm -hmm. our timing really means nothing at the end of the day. It's all about God's timing, mm -hmm. and yeah, this this is just happening. You know, not not only am I extremely blessed and extremely happy about the fact that I'm getting to finally make this gospel album dream come true. But mm -hmm. um, I'm also thrilled with the timing of it, because as we've seen in just the past year, so many things that have happened, um, you know, things yeah. like some of the movies like uh, Jesus Revolution and, and some of these other oh, things amazing. that happened that are just really, really starting to to catch on and, and have mm -hmm. major success in a major way. And it's almost like there's a there's a, a new uh, a new um, inspirational um, push that's being yeah. that's being that's taking place. And uh, it's like it's a current it is. It's it's just so amazing. <laughs> and once again, that has to be God doing that, because the fact is, yeah, is that totally. none of us had any idea. I had no idea when we were going to be releasing this album, that any of these other things were going to be taking place um, from mm -hmm. a spiritual standpoint uh, in, a, right. in such a big way. So I'm thrilled about getting to make the album, regardless of when I put it out, it would have been very, very right. special to me. But to see it happen mm -hmm. and to see it happening at a time when there's all these other wonderful things mm -hmm. that are going on, it's just it's just wonderful. It and and it is the timing and it's so true that, that I've I've seen so many Hi. different artists coming out with with the, the gospel roots. Yes. And it's like everybody you're going back to the roots of where you know, you, you came from and knowing that that is our, our true hope in life, you know, that, that we can go back to, to our roots of God and we got to get God back in to our, into our, our nation. Absolutely. Oh, our nation needs God so desperately. Absolutely. And so I'm so thankful that you've done this because you can reach people that 
we can't reach, you know, I can't reach people you can reach, you know, and that's how God does that. It's amazing. It's a blessing uh, from that standpoint. And I, you know, that was the one prayer mm -hmm. that I had when I finally, when I talked with the, the folks at Gaither and we finally decided that we were definitely going to push, push forward with this, move forward with it. I, my yeah. prayer all along has been, God, I want you to take this album and use it for your glory. I want you to use it. This is not about me. This is about you. I want you to use it to inspire mm -hmm. people, make people reflect maybe on their own personal lives and feel joy, feel uh, excitement, um, but but feel and and use yes. it for you. And if 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 it reaches out to people in a special way that mm -hmm. have maybe known God all their lives. Um, that's mm -hmm. wonderful. If it hopefully draws them even closer to want to have an even closer walk with Christ, I think that's a wonderful thing too. Also, for those that have never had that experience, if it makes them just a little bit, you know, curious about yeah. maybe there's something there that I'm not seeing that I that I need to look into. Mm -hmm. Once again, just use right. it, Father. Just use it for Your glory, and that's that's. Right. That was my entire prayer behind this entire album. And uh, I think that, you know, even if it just touches one person out there, then yeah. that's good enough for me. And you've done your job. You've done Absolutely. it. You've done it unto the Lord. And, that, and he, takes it, he takes the rest of it. That's you know, exactly he just takes right. care of it. We just have to do what, what he's told us to do. And, and he takes it and says, okay, thanks. And now I can do this. And uh, we just get to sit back and, and watch him watch him work. Absolutely. You had uh, such a great career, and and you've you've been blessed over the years. You've you've had um, a ton of album sales, a ton of CDs, and and just projects that have done fabulous. Several number one hits, and um, and yeah, help me. Um, Hold on, anyone, any more? All of those great hits you had, and um, there's all. I mean, I, I'm gonna forget most of them if I try and remember the rest of them. So it's like, okay, <laughs> let's just stop there while I'm ahead. But you've done, and I've listened to you for years. Over the years, I've listened to you, and and I always enjoyed your music. So thanks for everything you've done in the well, music. Thank book. you very much. I appreciate it. You're welcome. So now you've got, you're not just shy of, of anything. I mean, you've got your awards, you've got CMA awards, you've got Billboard Music Awards. You've got, you've got them racking up over there. You've got, a well, you, I imagine you have a room with all of the, the cases full. I really <laughs> don't. I, I'll be honest. I don't pay a lot of attention to those things. I mean, they're nice accolades, but you know, for me, the, the biggest joy that I get out of, out of doing what I do is going out in front of a live audience and having them sing every, they know every lyric to every song that I've ever done and to, mm -hmm. to play music in front of thousands of people and basically take right. them, you know, music is an escape. It's a, it's a way to get away from, you know, worrying about the everyday normal things that all of us worry about and some, some of us right. stress over. It's, it's a release. It's a way for people to come to a concert and forget about all their troubles for a while and just get lost in the music. Mm -hmm. And for me, that's, that's you know, I'm, I'm just blessed that, first of all, that the career has had this much longevity, but the fact that I'm still able to do it and I'm still in good voice and, and you know, I'm still able to go out on the road and, and do those shows live, that to me is, is really it's what I always dreamed about, and the dream comes true every single time I walk on that stage. And it feels just exactly the same way that it did when I first got started. It never gets old. It never gets That's boring. Cool. It's just so much fun. Yeah. I enjoy it so very much. And I'm just so thankful that God chose to bless me with the talent and bless me with the success mm -hmm. and the the uh, longevity in the career. It's, it's just been a... 
I have lived a life that most people only dream about, and I am so extremely grateful. That is so, and congratulations to all of that. And I know that that you're you so humble in in all of this. And I I have to ask you. I heard a funny story, and I want to see if you remember. But what's the funniest thing that's ever happened to you on stage in your earlier career? It had to oh, do with a motorcycle. Uh, no, uh, I dropped a motorcycle one time, <laughs> no? but that wasn't the worst one. <laughs> no, uh, I'm, oh, I'm, no. <laughs> I'm embarrassed to talk about this one. Uh, my pants split open. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> one time on stage and, oh, man, that's one of those things, you know, oh, you can't Lord. hide it, you know. <laughs> so I had to, I had to sort of tell the the band to just play something and I had to run off stage and go change clothes real quick. <laughs> but oh, I did Lord. drop a motorcycle. Yeah, that's the story you're thinking of. <laughs> I did. I was, I heard about that and I was like, oh, that would be so funny. Didn't put the kickstand or something down. And <laughs> exactly. I thought I had put the kickstand like, down, but it, I didn't get it down all the way. And I, <laughs> I went to get off the bike and it just completely, it reminded me of that. I don't, I don't know if you remember a show called Laugh In back in the 60s, but it reminded me of oh, that yeah. show where the guy <laughs> used to come out on the little tricycle and just fall over. That's exactly what it oh. looked like. And it's <laughs> like, well, things happen. I you remember know? that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's so funny. We're telling our age now for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> oh, shoot. That's so funny. Oh, my gosh. So things happen on stage things all the time happen. and they you're do. good at covering things up but you know things happen that's and, exactly um, right but, but you're so right in the music it's a getaway it's an escape time as people forget what what's going on at home or forget what's going on in the world forget that sure. hour that two hours those three hours it's just engrossed in in the music and in the time absolutely and have a, you know you have a gift and the part of that and making a change in people's lives. Well, thank you so awesome. much. Thank you. Well, I I have lost track of time. <laughs> I'm not that's quite okay. sure if we're on our <laughs> if we're on our, our timeline or not, but I think we're getting pretty close to the end. Well, but, thank you. Um, but Travis, I am so excited that you uh, took time out to spend with me here. I would say around the table, but I'm kind of um, I'm on. I told you earlier, I'm on the road this on this one. And um, we had to learn a couple of things before we got on air, but that's okay. People don't need to know all that, right? There you go. I'm just glad you were able to <laughs> figure it told. out. I didn't tell. That's great. Yeah, me too. Me too. So um, anyway, I am uh, very honored to have this time with you, and I can't wait to get the release and your of your new album and well, Little Country you. Chapel. Thank you, Bev. I appreciate it. it's going to be everywhere. You yes, it welcome. is. You're Absolutely. So welcome. Um, and now we're going to, it's going to be everywhere, guys. Uh, people for wherever you can find Travis Tritt, uh, his, his music is going to be, that's where you're going to find the Little Country Chapel. And it's going to be all of the digital outlets. You will be able to find it. And it's coming out on September 15th, I believe. That's correct. Isn't it on the, the release of it? That's correct. And uh, so get ready to download the whole thing because you're going to want to hear it. And um, I can't wait till they hear this. Like the father loves his son. Oh my God. And the mama song, all of them. Just get out there and buy the whole thing. You'll be, you'll download it, enjoy it. You'll be blessed. I guarantee you. So until next time, I'm Bev. This is Travis Tritt saying thanks for joining us here on Absolutely Gospel.